Say what you will about the 1980s. They were corny, they were ridiculous, they were obnoxious, and somehow also super grim. But my god, they gave us some killer movie soundtracks. We went into the danger zone, we believed in the power of love, we had the time of our lives. And now, the Great Pop Culture Debate Podcast wants to determine what is the best film soundtrack from the 1980s. The heat is on, and I'm sending Glenn Fry my utilities bill. I'm your host, <laughs> Eric Resnack. And please help me welcome my top of the charts panel. He plans to hold his fist in the air in a freeze frame the entire recording. It's Jim Dadzik. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't you forget about me. I never would, Jim. But which Breakfast Club archetype are you? Uh, you know, deep down, I'm the quirky introvert by nature. Oh, I'm the slut. Um, just, <laughs> just a, are we all sluts we and are. all quirky introverts by nature? Isn't I, that the whole lesson of the Breakfast Club? I, I We're all so. part of it. Yes. You're a tease. You're a tease. <laughs> no, teases don't give it away. Um, <laughs> just the bean town gay on a Saturday night looking for the fight of her life. It's Johnny Minogue. I'm a maniac, maniac on the pod, and I'm potting like I've never pod before. <laughs> he is, and actually, we are recording this on a Saturday night because our <gasps> lives are just that sad. Ooh. So there you have it. And she's got a head for music and a bod for sin. It's Kate Reculia. Is there anything wrong with that? Not in my book. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get to the debate, how does this work? We made a poll of 100 or so of the most notable film soundtracks from the 1980s. These were strictly films, not stage shows. And while we included all instrumental soundtracks in the initial poll, we opted not to include them on the final bracket. We'll do a best film score episode in subsequent debate. More than 50 people took the poll. We tallied their votes, ranked their picks by popularity, and added them to a bracket. Now we argue about it and insult each other, all for your amusement. Want to play along at home? You can. Head to greatpopculturedebate.com and go to polls and brackets. There you'll find the downloadable listener brackets for this and every episode of our little show. Do your picks match up with ours? Do you know who you're going to call when something's strange and it don't feel good? Let us know by <laughs> dropping a comment on this episode at our website or by yelling at us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And lastly, if you're curious about how we went from the top 32 down to the soundtrack 16, become a Patreon supporter of our podcast. Our Patreons at the $5 level or higher get exclusive exclusive access to the warm-up slash part one for each episode in which we work our way through round one. It's like a whole bonus episode for each topic, and it includes arguments you will not hear anywhere else. And it's only one of the great Patreon perks, so please consider supporting us on Patreon today. With that out of the way, let's crank up our Walkmans and get straight to the debates. I will say to long-term listeners of the debate, the script for this one is going to be a little different. Because round one was chaotic, and there was no way for me to predict which ones would advance. So we are winging this, folks. There is no script. We are just going for it. Yep. You, you know, like any soundtrack, you just like some of them are just going to be demos from hanging around. Some of them are going to be like, wow, that was a real banger. We are but flying by the seat of our pants. Mm -hmm. We are. If you're wondering about signing up for the Patreon feed, uh, I think this might be the one to listen to round one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was a great discussion. Really good arguments. Super fun. Um, but, yeah, it's not going to have the, like, sassy little terrible puns that Eric normally does. Because <laughs> I literally did not know what I was writing. Like, literally. And almost everything changed. So, uh, all right. Yep. With that out yep. of the way, uh, we're going to go first up. It's ultimate number one seed, Dirty Dancing, up against David Bowie and Puppets in Labyrinth, a four seed. And I believe we were unanimous that Dirty Dancing should advance. Um, I am completely fine with that. I do want to say that uh, I think Labyrinth is very much a generational pick. Uh, mm -hmm. If you were in your mm -hmm. 20s and 30s in the 80s, I doubt you really care about this one. But if you were a kid and you saw that movie, those songs, those Bowie songs, really kind of, I still, I think, really still echo with us. And It can be uh, like your first experience, your first exposure to Bowie. It, like, it totally. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever told this story on the podcast before, but I showed <gasps> Labyrinth to my niece when she was like four, which sidebar, probably too young. Um, but we're sitting there watching it and David Bowie comes on. And the first thing she says to me is, Uncle Eric, what's wrong with that girl's privates? Because David <laughs> Bowie, like notably in this movie, does not wear any type of underwear. And mm -hmm. 
Lil Bowie is flopping around everywhere, right? I was like, bless oh, him. bless him. Bless him, right? What a legend. Oh, take um, me to Suffragette City. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, that's actually, that's a, that's a man. His name's David Bowie. Um, and that's why his privates are different. She's like, okay. And then he starts singing. <laughs> okay. And she says to me, Uncle Eric, do you think that girl's a good singer? And I was like, again, that's a man. His name is David Bowie. And yes, I think he's a great singer. And she turns, she's like, oh, God, I don't. <laughs> Listen, I don't love you. Um, but no, it is, it's, it's a great kind of introduction to, to the music of David Bowie. And it is a fantastic, very dark movie with some beautiful music in it. So I've rhapsodized too much. We'll move on. Up next, it's Three Seed Bro Fest Top Gun up against Two Seeds Back to the Future. I will speak on Top Gun, but Johnny, why don't you get in our, your DeLorean and take us back to the future? Oh, yes. The, I'm about to strike the clock tower with some lightning on this one. Um, so what we were looking at is that you got an amazing soundtrack, which is headed by two Huey Lewis and the News songs, like Power of Love and Back in Time, which were... But which actually bookmarked the movie because Power Love started off and Back in Time was in the credits. Um, there were those are some of the two most amazing songs that came out of that era of, of music. I mean, Huey Lewis was was at the at the top of his game at that point. He had been number one soundtrack. I mean, number one album with sports. He had put, they wanted to get him onto this album. They tried to get him on Ghostbusters, and then that didn't happen. And the, oh, there's a whole other legal question about that. Anyway, we'll oh. get to the, yeah. It's it's very interesting. Ray, Ray Parker Jr. and uh, Huey Lewis. But anyway, so they didn't have to worry about getting somebody who sounded like Ray, uh, Harry Lewis in the news. They got him. Um, and not only did it, we we have two really awesome. Um, uh, songs from the 1980s power of love which is again this is one of my this is one of my favorite movies of all time so i'm excited to talk about this um but also has some 1950s nostalgia for that was really popular at the time in the 80s so we have earth angel and johnny be good with which was not not michael j fox you would think it was michael <laughs> j fox but they had some they had some studio musicians doing that but it was it was just it really brought you to both the 1955 and 1985 of of hill valley and there are a couple of other songs there was a lindsey buckingham song and an eric clapton song on this on this out al- on this album if you weren't aware of it i thought it was um overall a really really exciting album now i know some people are not big fans of some of the other tracks on it. i think the score probably is a little bit more um iconic than any of the other tracks that are not huey lewis on the news but however i still think that those huey lewis songs and the um chuck berry inspired marty mcfly uh, versions are still gonna be something that people would look at as an amazing soundtrack from the 1980s yeah, and I want to talk a couple things that we discussed in the the Patreon. I think are important to know for this. We converse. We conversed. Yeah, <laughs> sure. We conversed. We, we talked conversed. about. We conversed about the fact that um, the fifties and sixties nostalgia was so ever present in the soundtracks of the eighties. Like the boomers were having a moment, right? And when it came to soundtracks that were all 50s and 60s songs so stand by me big chill we knocked those out of contention pretty early because they aren't really emblematic of the 80s back to the future much like the movie itself straddles both right it has the 50s scenes and the 80s scenes so i still think those songs are very relevant um and we also talked about the fact that songs that were in the movie but didn't make it onto the actual soundtrack release we're still fair game for our discussion and i think that's especially important with back to the future because i don't know about anybody else on the panel if you tried to find the back to the future soundtrack to listen to to do your research for this episode good luck you mm-hmm. can't find it anywhere mm-hmm. was that true for anybody else it was tough to yeah. find well, yeah. i just looked up the songs i think yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's same, what i did same. Yeah, but like I had to go to YouTube and listen to really shitty YouTube uh, playlists of it. But like, yeah. <laughs> it does not exist on Spotify. It does not exist on Apple or Amazon that I was finding. So it's interesting that this uh, kind of disappeared, much like Marty McFly would have had he not united his parents. Um, but those two <laughs> Huey Lewis songs are amazing, and um, yeah, I love yeah. giving Huey Lewis any cred. I don't know if you've you've kept up with him. He's had a rough couple of years. Um, oh yeah. Oh, Huey. It is. It's very sad. Um, Check but out the I will, behind the music. Uh, yeah. I am here to talk about Top Gun. And, the Danger uh, Zone. The Danger Zone. And uh, in round one, I argued that uh, 
really I stopped my argument with this has not one but two songs from the king of 1980s soundtracks, Mr. Kenny Loggins. Um, those being Danger Zone and Playing with the Boys, both attractive to very different audiences. Uh, all of those audiences have penises. Um, but then we didn't even talk about the frankly signature song from the Top Gun album, which is Berlin's Take My Breath Away. And it is a beautiful ballad that is so evocative that it makes love scenes between Kelly McGillis and Tom Cruise seem plausible. Like, that's magic. You know? Um, and, like, those are just three of the songs on this album i have notes here somewhere that i i need to find but um there are amazing <laughs> other songs on top gun wait i can find it i can find it i have it in my notes um <laughs> there we go but, but, but wait but wait isn't it because kelly mcgillis was supposed to believe that now knowing what we know about kelly mcgillis it went the opposite way <laughs> it maybe yeah, yeah that's true yeah. um no but seriously i think top gun is in my opinion, a, a legendary soundtrack. Back to the Future is a good one, but I do think it is telling that you cannot find the Back to the Future soundtrack yeah. right now. Yes, and Top absolutely. Gun is still, you go to uh, any record store, I buy vinyl, you got plenty of copies of Top Gun, good luck finding Back to the Future, which actually may be an argument against my point. But Jim, where are you mm -hmm. on this one? I'm 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 going to the highway into the danger zone here. Um, it definitely I agree, and, and also like I know we talked about uh, picking song. It's okay to include the songs outside of the soundtrack album, but the soundtrack album for Top Gun is um, is strong. It, it even you know they purposely end with that epic theme song as a last track, which really kind of gives this this album full of bangers all the way through um, a nice kind of a, a quiet end. It is, yeah. It is a it is a soundtrack full of bangers. Kate, mm -hmm. uh, I am also on Team Top Gun. Berlin's "Take My Breath Away" is one of. It was written by Giorgio Moroder. Did mm, you know that? It was, and, yeah. and, and Tom Whitlock. Yeah, it's it is an extremely synthy, mm -hmm. new wavy '80s song that you would know this song from the 80s like if you had 80s compilations or you know were watching anything about the 80s you would know the song without necessarily knowing it was from top gun um so i think that there's a jessica simpson version oh god there is. <laughs> sorry there i'm is. on wikipedia yeah. right now yeah it's well, right it's, now. <laughs> it's no, no, don't no don't uh, listen to it anyway get behind me I, satan i will not yeah. have it <laughs> <laughs> so i do think again i the the huey lewis songs are great um but i think top gun takes us it takes it so there were there were multiple singles danger zone yeah. take my breath away heaven in your eyes which is by uh lover boy mm. mighty mighty wings by cheap trick it's so Play corny but i love it <laughs> <laughs> and then playing with the boys which as uh eric uh elucidated in the the first episode is the soundtrack of one of the great uh volleyball scenes in american cinema gay <laughs> like, exactly uh, so johnny's had a rough episode if you listen to part one most of his things have gone up um i'm not this one I'm okay with this okay. one i'm like you didn't think this is gonna stand the test You've been a good sport. Uh, we are going to play Duck, Duck, Goose, and Top Gun will continue to round three. Next up, it's eight seed Weird Science, which pulled a hell of an upset, outing a one seed Breakfast Club in round one. And it's now up against five seed Say Anything. Jim, you wanted to talk about Weird Science while Kate is going to take on Say Anything. I'm going to have Jim go first. All right. Um, I think that, I mean, we're comparing uh, some things that are similar, certain kind of era. You have mm -hmm. uh, boombox over the head type of uh, aspect for say anything. Uh, Weird Science has, I think, a little more new wave and quirky stuff that fits the film better and highlights some of the unique aspects of the 80s. So I, I like to celebrate that from comparing these two. Absolutely. Uh, and Kate, what do you got up for say anything? So say anything, Cameron Crowe's directorial debut, if there's anything we know about Cameron Crowe, he likes a soundtrack. The music is integral to the experience of the film. And when I was making my picks, I had sort of a three-pronged rubric. The first one is um, 
how how much does the music exemplify the decade how 80s is it um what is the balance in the soundtrack of bangers to filler and is the music like a pivotal integral part of the experience of the film or is it essentially sort of incidental say anything kind of hits all those things and it's very like the cool alt kids 80s album you've got cult of personality living color you've got cheap trick you want it you've got red hot chili peppers taste the pain depeche mode stripped um the replacements fishbone and peter gabriel's in your eyes with one of the most iconic images of 80s film which also has to do with 80s music um of john cusack hoisting that boombox over his head now i mean there are yeah I, I, I'm arguing for this, but there is some part of me that like, really, there's no Oingo Boingo on the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and, like, I am an Oingo Boingo girl, so I could be swayed away from the thing I just argued for. It's a tough one, I think, genuinely, because I argued for Weird Science in round one, and it has a lot of really cool, interesting songs on it. But Say Anything has even more cool, interesting songs, and they're arguably by more successful artists. Johnny, yes. where are you on this yes. one? Um, I'm going to say anything. I was in the first round. I argued for it, and I was completely passionate for it then. Um, and I, th there's so many, there's so many different parts that come into it. It is a very um, varied and. Um, it's a, good mix. It's, a it's a good mix it's a diverse mix of songs yeah from different types of artists some who are coming up some who are more established so you have like mm -hmm. cheap trick and you have fishbone they're very different genres yep. and different times so yep. i feel that that it is a much better cultivated soundtrack um mm -hmm. so that's why i'm going to say anything this is going to be a bad argument and i'm going to put it right out there right now I think that Say Anything as a soundtrack is almost like a mixtape that is cultivated yeah. by mm -hmm. a guy to try to speak to a girl the same way that Lloyd Dobler is in the movie. And mm -hmm. Weird Science is almost like a party soundtrack for mm -hmm. a house party, mm -hmm. which is not mm -hmm. to take anything away with it because it's a it's a banging soundtrack. That's mm -hmm. the sort of like mood of the movies, yeah. though, right? Like yeah. that's yeah, yep. Which I think makes them both very successful in very different ways. Um, that's why it's tough, I think, because I they yeah. both do that well. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There's this is the same one we had a, another situation in a, in a different debate today where there's no bad winner. It's just a mm -hmm. bummer for whoever loses. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. Kate, you're with say anything. Did you say? I'm gonna stay with say anything. I'm gonna stay with say anything. Yeah. And mm -hmm. Johnny, you're staying with. Say I'm saying anything. say anything. Yep. I think I'm also going to go with say anything here, even though I, mm -hmm. I fought very mm -hmm. passionately for mm -hmm. weird science. I think say anything is the better soundtrack at the it, at the end of the day. I think it's a more meaningful. And if you were a teenager at that time period, I feel like say anything really spoke to you on a musical level. Just, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I may be completely off on that. Um, speaking of 80s teen angst, let's continue with three seed Pretty in Pink, which is currently up against two seed blockbuster Ghostbusters. Johnny, I want you to talk about Pretty in Pink and I will defend why Bustin makes me feel good. Go for it, Johnny. Okay, so <laughs> I'm excited for this battle because it's an Annie Potts battle. So oh, hey, <laughs> it totally is. I'm so excited for this. <laughs> All right, so this woman's going to design you a good argument on on uh, pretty and pink so not gonna I, design a good dress though <laughs> oh. Oh. that dress was terrible oh, that dress, no, it's, it's a crime it makes, it's it a makes crime me, it makes me sad because the, the dress that annie was yes! wearing was so pretty yes. what did you do it's like it's like you took it through a shredder and just glued it back together no awful awful anyway yeah no that was terrible. <laughs> anyway so <laughs> let's go back to the soundtrack shall we so we're talking about a, a couple of songs in here which was talking about a teen talking about teen movies this is another brat pack classic with molly ringwald and we have some more molly ringwald movies coming later on but we've got um the psychedelic fur is pretty in pink the title track which is such a really cool song with the with this with the vocals of the of the lead singer and the horns and then you have if you leave omd which oh. is just that mm -hmm. that oh whoa oh i just it's i such a it's good so song. just because it chills yeah. and but then you have also <laughs> other tracks on a new order echo and the bunny man the smiths and suzanne vega at the beginning of her career with joe jackson mm. those are you have a really great group of artists in excess um there so we're talking about like the kind of 
early kind of pre-alternative music era of music but mm-hmm. this was kind of like it was coming out a new wave and they had some they just had a really good group of artists who were able to come together for this and it wasn't in the soundtrack but Otis Strings Try a Little Tenderness mm-hmm. with, with Ducky trying and pleading who I should have ended up with, with uh, her at the end but even mm-hmm. still just added one little cherry on top of an absolutely epically good soundtrack from a whole bunch of amazing uh, artists from the 80s and i was um i i would be i could put this on right now and just listen to every single track on it and enjoy it for what it is yeah this one is really hard because this is really hard we were just talking about say anything speaking to the teens and, and and being like the cool soundtrack of the decade but pretty in pink has got i think arguably the coolest album on this list every single artist you just mentioned like Mm -hmm. we're cutting edge at that time Mm -hmm. and they're all great songs and they're not the obvious songs from them right they're really interesting songs i had this on cassette in my very first car which is a 1992 mercury topaz um (laughs) that tells you something um and i loved it i listened to this all the time that was in the 90s but still um it it's a great soundtrack but it's up against ghostbusters which Tell me if anybody else had this experience when you were in grade school, you had music class and how many times did the music class, and maybe I'm a little bit older than the other people on here, but did the music class end with the class begging the music teacher to put on Ghostbusters so everybody (laughs) could yell, Ghostbusters! Ghostbusters! Did anybody else do this? I mean, I remember lending the music teacher my cassette of it, which is why it had my name on it. Interesting. Were you the person who was giving us the, because Kate and I went to I might be! That's incredible. I might be. Um, I might be. Again, I'm a little bit older than the other people on this podcast but like that song was omnipresent that mm-hmm. song was hugely popular but as we discussed in part one you can't have or do you weigh one mega hit song on a soundtrack higher than a soundtrack that is filled with six sevens and eights right and that i will is say that i will say this and i mentioned this in the back to the future thing um so this song so the song Ghostbusters was they wanted to actually get Huey Lewis to do the soundtrack and he he was he wasn't doing it for one one reason or another they got Ray Parker Jr to come in to record Ghostbusters Huey Lewis then ended up suing him before <laughs> for copyright infringement because it was so similar to his I want a new yeah. drug yeah. so it was a it was a it had to outsource it to somebody else to do a, just a carbon copy of it now not saying it's not a great song it is but it it's a little it's a little bit of like well we couldn't get a first choice so here's a second choice it's mm-hmm. an awesome song and yes I am that era where I would have sang that I wouldn't have that in music class I think we did Michael Jackson but in any event um so with that being said because there isn't the same type of legalities with it that's why pretty <laughs> pink would be a better option jim i know you're a huge ghostbusters fan where are you on this one i i am and um at what you had in music class i've had for the last two years with my four-year-old and three <laughs> it started in halloween and it hasn't stopped from two years ago um but uh pretty in pink is is more of a of just a great playlist of a yeah. starter pack for cool new wave eighties music. It's great representation of the time period, so that one wins over for me. Okay, uh, Kate, where are you? I am also on Pretty in Pink, despite being, a, you know, a person who had this on cassette. And I will. So Jim mentioned it in the in the pre show, the first the first part of it, how great the song Magic is, mm-hmm. and how in t- like wonderful it is in that scene when like all hell is breaking loose and the ghosts are coming out in New York. It's a really great song. Um, and it's only on and, that soundtrack, right? Like, it yeah, was... I think it's only on that soundtrack. Um, and the Elmer Bernstein theme is incredible yeah. too. So. Yeah. But Pretty in Pink is a really good soundtrack. It's a really good soundtrack. And I will say the other songs on Ghostbusters, even though Air Supply, Laura Branigan, <laughs> My Gay Heart Lives. Oh, <laughs> oh, Laura Branigan. I know, Fallen Angel. It's just, um, it's it, 
as a whole, it's just not as strong as Pretty in Pink. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm completely fine with Pretty in Pink advancing to yep. the Elite Eight. Next up, yep. it one seed Footloose versus five seed Fast Times at Ridgemont High. And I believe we were unanimous for Footloose, despite the fact that Ridgemont also filled with really great songs. Yeah. Uh, Somebody's Baby, as we were mentioning in, in the earlier round, is incredible. Yeah. I Still to this day, it's it's untouchable. It's um, a great song. It sounds incredible still every time you hear it. Just a up against footloose yeah so. it's up against footloose it's up against footloose i i can't vote against footloose here kenny loggins ladies and gentlemen you're gonna be hearing that name a lot this episode and bonnie tyler <laughs> and, bonnie, and tyler. bonnie tyler and denise uh what's her name uh, denise. Uh, uh, oh denise oh wait 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 i want to uh, say denise williams but i don't think that's correct yes denise williams okay let's great for the boy. yeah let's hear it for the boy <laughs> mm -hmm. all right so moving on it's three seed fame versus two seed flash dance kate you wanted to speak up for fame and johnny you wanted to take a steel time girl out for a saturday <laughs> night and go with flash dance i'm making this up as i go people there's nothing written i'm sorry <laughs> have kate go first okay so fame is fame is one of those movies and music that i was just like aware of as a child because it was in the air like mm -hmm. the song fame i had no concept of its context but i loved it right um until i saw i saw the movie when i was probably in my 20s and i was like oh my god this is a great movie <laughs> like it's a great movie it hits all of those things right it is extremely exemplifies the 80s it's sort of like i want to be famous with my art um and the the music the irene kara songs are have that great sort of synthy produced torch song fame out here on my own incredible um it is a completely integral part of the movie fame is a musical about creative kids at like the the fame high school the performing arts high school so hot lunch jam is a jam and is actually a, a like a sequence in the film where the kids in the lunchroom are doing the hot lunch jam and let's talk about i sing the body electric which is the final part of the movie when they are all graduating seniors and they sing the body electric and there's like dancers and like it's it's extremely earnest and extremely cheesy and i just think it's a wonderful soundtrack i don't think there's any that i mean yes the palma crane songs are not as successful as the irene Kara songs but it's still it's only eight songs and all of it is good yeah, that's that's fair. And yeah. speaking of the talented Miss Kara, Johnny, mm. talk to us about oh. Flashdance. What a feeling. First one, there's nothing but a really good <laughs> soundtrack. <laughs> We have this. Yeah, so let's talk. Let's talk about the other Irene Karras uh, album on here. So, well, she's only one. She's only one actress. On, only one person on this. And well, it starts off like Flash Dance. What a feeling! It's another Giorgio Moroder. Giorgio Moroder was a lot all over this uh, soundtrack. He all over this decade. All over this decade. And he, <laughs> what he, a blessing. He was from the seventies too. Yeah. So I mean, he so he 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 wrote at least half of the songs on here. Um, mm -hmm. and you can and you can hear it. It's like. Flash Dance, what a feeling is still it is still one of those anthems that gets you pumped up. Uh, I like when I think of it, I can see the, the really bad Jennifer Beals uh, body double with the mustache doing oh. a doing a break dancing on the floor. Amazing. It's amazing. So but there's other songs it's like you have you know maniac which we've which was in my intro which is mm -hmm. still a cool cool so steel town girl they are no more steel factories in pittsburgh by the way so they're not they're not steel town girls like that but um shandy cinnamon who it was sounds like a porn star from the 80s yes. he's a dream is such a sexy song it starts off with that just really kind of choppy guitars and it's like he is a dream and you can feel like you're in this what was supposed to be a strip club but in 1983 couldn't make a movie about a strip club um manhunt i'm going on a manhunt who, what kind of steel town girl doesn't want to go on a manhunt um donna summer makes an appearance on this a little bit she does. But, but, but romeo well scotty georgia Moroder was like donna let's go come here kim carnes is on here L laura brannigan is on this soundtrack too a, a, a song called imagination so it is it is 40 minutes of pure magic there is nothing there's not one song that i would say is like terrible there's a couple that i go oh, not my favorite but every single one of these songs it really sets the mood for this for this movie and it stands alone as one 
amazing soundtrack and it's it was one of the highest selling selling soundtracks of the decade yeah it, it i mean without this music flash dance is not the success that it was Mm-mm. no that's true uh jim where are you on this um am i, I okay so i haven't seen either one to be honest that's am, I a, am i a maniac for that um no. it, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's hard to argue against one of the best selling albums of all time um yeah. nine grammy awards um, it definitely has a cool sound of the 80s. It um, definitely has a feeling to it. So I, I'm going with Flashdance. And what a feeling it is. Um, <laughs> here's my argument. And frankly, Jim, you just kind of encapsulated it. If we're talking about the sound of the 80s, fame almost goes into the 70s for me. Yeah, mm-hmm. it does. It's it, true. It's it true. means almost into kind of mm-hmm. those like Jesus Christ superstar, that type of an, I mean, it's not quite to that level, but you see what I'm saying. It's very musical theater, whereas flash dances quintessential eighties music, like top to tail. And um, for that reason, I go with flash dance. It's also the higher seed. So uh, it will advance and fame is out. It did not live forever. Uh, One seed purple rain is next up against four seed Ferris Bueller's day off. We were unanimous in putting forward with purple rain here. I do want to make the note that Ferris Bueller's day off never actually got a soundtrack album and never got a release. Um, The, they did eventually like the fans petitioned and there was one released many many years later i want to say late 90s but john hughes was like i'm not releasing this because i don't think it's going to be commercially successful it's such a bizarre mix of music you've got donka shane you've got the beatles twist and shout you've got obviously the um uh, uh, yellow chica, chica, yellow mm-hmm. thank you um i love it it was one of my favorite movies for many many years it's it's kind of slipped in my estimation since but i it's up against purple rain ladies and gentlemen yeah. and yep. uh that's pretty stiff competition so uh even for the sausage king of chicago abe froman <laughs> uh next up the goonies a three seed is up against seven seed risky business johnny you wanted to speak on the goonies for a second yeah, I did. I I wanted to. I just really wanted to say it's because Cindy Lauper is one of my favorite artists of all times, and I love. I was like, I love her, but with the Goonies, she the Goonies are good enough. She really did not like that song for many many decades for a number of reasons. Um, she didn't like how it got kind of. She kind of was strong armed into doing it and she didn't like it. There's a lot of bad memories about that, so she doesn't really like it. So I don't think we could really. I mean, she's come around eventually because her fans love it, but I can't go and vote for the Goonies over Risky Business for the fact that even the artist who made the actual iconic song from that uh, from that movie wasn't a fan of it at the time. So I love you, Cindy, and this is for you. <laughs> I'm voting for Risky Business. He, he's committing seppuku in order to please Cindy Lauper. Um, I, I could be like, hey, I could do it for a lot worse. It's true. Um, and I will say this, like, I believe that if you take out that song, there's not much there for the Goonies soundtrack. No. Um, but I will also, since we're talking about Cindy Lauper and songs on 80s um, uh, soundtracks, Vibes, one of my very favorite movies. No! Um, oh, yes. It, and it's Cindy Lauper's big acting debut. She has a song on Vibes called There's a Hole in My yep. Heart That Goes All the Way to China. China. And it's so good. And I cannot find it anywhere. And it bums me <gasps> out because it's great. Um, so, kind of an aside, but um, we stand Cindy Lauper on this here podcast. And she was kind of the unsung queen of several like D list. 80 soundtracks yeah um but i love her for that i love that journey and once they do kinky boots the musical movie she'll have her egot absolutely mm-hmm. absolutely and i welcome that um jim are you sticking with goonies you did on round one no you're switching no. to risky business <laughs> no I, I agree with you guys that's definitely that's worth talking about risky business later yeah yep. and kate you're yep. going with risky too I I am, yes. Great. So with that, we are at the end of round two. We're going to hop into a DeLorean and get sexually harassed by our teenage parents, and we will be right back. (laughs) 
And we're back for round three of our best 80s soundtrack debate. Our button downtown won't allow us to dance to that rowdy rock and roll music, but we can still express ourselves on social media. Before we go into the next matchups, I want to ask my panel, where can people find you online? And hopefully without raising the ire of John Lithgow. Jim, what about you? Um, I'm on Twitter at JCZAD. Perfect. Johnny? I'm on everything as Johnny Minogue, one word, no H. Like the like the singer Minogue. Like the singer Minogue, exactly. the one and only. Well, there's two, but yes. There's two, but. <laughs> Kate, what about you? Uh, I am on Twitter only occasionally at Kate Reculia. And if you like cat pictures, I am on Instagram as Gomez Rack. That's my cat. Perfect. And we do love her cat photos. And you can find me at Eric Resniak. That's E R I C R E Z S N Y A K at Twitter and Instagram, or just message at Great Pop Culture Debate on Insta or at Culture underscore Debate on Twitter. So, with that out of the way, let's move on to round three before Gozer the Gozerian asks us if we are gods. For the record, yes, we are gods. Uh, always, 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 say always, yes. always, always say yes. Always say yes, Ray. Uh, <gasps> first up, Dirty Dancing versus Top Gun. And um, I want to go around the horn first. Kate, where are you on this? Dirty Dancing. Uh, Jim? Uh, Dirty Dancing. I could be swayed. Johnny? I'm going with Baby. Well, nobody puts her in a corner. No. Um, (laughs) I have argued very sharply for Top Gun up until now. But I have to say, Dirty Dancing was our ultimate number one seed. It by far got the most votes. And I think that is correct for multiple reasons. So I don't even think we need to debate. We're going to move Dirty Dancing on. Move it on. Keep going. Next, it's up Say Anything versus Pretty in Pink. And I want to see, Kate, who are you voting for here? I'm going to go with Pretty in Pink just because personally I am more of a New Wave fan. Johnny? Um, I'm going with Say Anything because there's just so many um, amazing, iconic songs from the 1980s that ended up on this soundtrack. Why don't you walk us through nature and give us some of those examples? Oh, yes, let's do it. So Cult's Personality, uh, Living Color, Taste the Pain, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Stripped, Depeche Mode, Creepy as Fuck, Love It. Um, And Keeping the Dream Alive, Fry Hearts. Nancy Wilson, Nancy Wilson, who who was uh, Cam and Crow's wife, who is Mm. the was the was the blonde from i was gonna i was gonna go another way from i was gonna go somewhere else but from heart not Anne, but the guitar all for love. But nancy yeah nancy. nancy yeah nancy i was because I was, I was remembering the heart behind the music and being like Anne's the face and nancy's the something else so mm-hmm. i didn't want to use that so um but she has a hit she has something and then of course what can we say when you have one of the biggest songs of the of the end of the 20 20 the century in your eyes by peter gabriel when you put them all together yeah it none of them were from that from that movie they weren't originated for that movie but you put them together and it you've got amazement yeah and i'm wondering i don't know if this is true but if say anything was one of the first movies that was kind of a hit for compilation of current music and i don't know if that, i don't know if that's accurate that's or a not. good question i mean it's 1989 mm-hmm. i don't know that's that's a that would be a that would be something that requires more research yeah. yes and we did not do that as we mentioned this is a chaotic episode folks uh, <laughs> Jim, where are you on this one uh pretty in pink for me i th- i think it's uh one of the best john hughes soundtracks in my opinion um as we, i don't want to retread what we've said before but i mean there's a lot on there suzanne vega from psychedelic Phil first new order the smiths echo and the bunny man i think it is interesting I, I don't know if this sways the argument or not but diving into wikipedia um i that a lot of the songs were re-recorded or recorded specifically for the film mm. and um so they adjusted like uh, pretty in pink by psychedelic furs was re-recorded to be less raw so it fit the film better uh left to center by talk talk was remixed um you have uh some other songs uh echo and bunny man's bring on the dancing horses was recorded specifically mm-hmm. for the film such um, a good song yeah and so like and those have kind of become their own their own new wave staples outside of the film itself but also it's very integrated in with the film there's yeah. some great stuff that didn't make the the album itself um that are they're not specifically 80s but there's some other great songs like try a little tenderness and cherish mm-hmm. um you know the 
uh, Huff Post called it the 15, uh, 15 <laughs> film uh, <laughs> compilations that'll change your life. And uh, Rolling Stone said it's the the 25 greatest soundtracks of all time. So, you, you, I mean, you can't argue with those two sources. You can't argue with it. Um, <laughs> th- I mean, listen, these are uh, two really great albums about two quintessential teen movies from the 1980s. But I think what is making me lean towards Pretty in Pink is the fact that the songs were made or at least changed for the movie whereas in uh say anything it was cameron crowe being very good at his job and selecting songs Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. he knew from that era would be relevant to that audience but i feel like pretty in pink uh the music is more integral to the film which is one of your rubrics right kate yes yeah Yeah, absolutely so Mm -hmm. i think we're three for pink and one for anything correct Yes. I believe yes. so, yes. yes. Okay, so that means Pretty in Pink advances. Next up, it's Footloose versus Flashdance 2 that I always get mixed up in my head, but I think they're both great albums. Johnny, which one are you picking here? Flashdance. All right, Kate? <sighs> I'm going to give it to Footloose. Okay. Because of Let's Hear It for the Boy. Mm-hmm. Almost Paradise, oh. and Holding Out for a Hero, and Footloose, Kenneth Loggins. Kenneth Loggins. Kenneth Loggins. Yeah. There's Kenneth Loggins, yes. Yes. Um, we cannot have a Final Four without a Kenny Loggins bop in there. I'm sorry. Mm, it's true. It's true. Uh, yeah, no, it's just, it's, and the other thing, too, like, obviously, Flashdance is about dance. It's about music. Footloose is about music in a whole other level, mm-hmm. right? Like it is literally about a town that has has banned music and dancing celebration, right? And so it's about it's about the the joy and the necessity of being footloose. Let's dance, which is kind of like anticlimactic and adorable at the end. And also just like little Kevin Bacon, like angry dancing in a barn or wherever the hell he is. Like <laughs> I just I, when I think of images of Footloose, I see multiple music sort of like stills from music videos. And when I think actually this is probably unfair because I have never seen Flashdance, but all I see is her like pulling the bucket and the psh, you know that. that yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's more than just that. that it there's is. More, yeah. yeah. She was yeah, she was she was struggling herself like that she was a welder who really wanted to make it make it big and go to uh the ballet school and she was a rough around the edges girl and you know a lot of the songs are talking about trying to raise up and be and get to that point i mean what a feeling (laughs) you know what's amazing as you guys are describing this it's the same thing we had in round one when we had working girl versus top gun it is the same story the male and female version of it it literally is Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and we went with top gun and i'm sorry i think i'm going with the man again Um, damn patriarchy patriarchy. (laughs) but i mean that was the 80s you know um jim (laughs) honestly yes is emblematic of the decade it is jim where are you on this one uh you know i i the flash dance sold so much i mean i don't know if that has uh like as an album if that's did footloose yeah. sell more let's though see. footloose let's, let's see footloose blah 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 i know and what it if was... got an oscar okay okay all right footloose did not get an oscar no. it won an oscar in my heart doesn't that count? <laughs> also, the 15th anniversary collector's edition also has Hurt So Good by John Mellencamp mm. and Waiting for a Girl Like You, oh. which is such a good song. Such a good song. <laughs> and like, this is the thing. I-, I actually will argue that the Flashdance soundtrack has a lot of artists that were... A- either didn't quite peak or didn't quite fully form and the flash dance or excuse me the footloose soundtrack has like huge artists on it huge artists big songs so almost paradise that's also ann wilson is it so we had Dan Nancy? Wilson, yeah, it's Van oh Wilson and God. Mike Reno. Uh, Let's I, hear it for the boy, I, Denise Williams. I will yeah. have a, a fun fact. I ended up having these two um champagne flutes that I got at a Salvation Army that said Almost Paradise on class of 1987 <laughs> on it. This is like in 2000. Yes! I, I just it was it I just loved it because it was so goddamn cheesy. I just had to have them, even though I, had, I was like, that was not my prom, but uh, yeah, I'm still going with Flash Dance because I still mm. think it's the better. <laughs> 
it's the better movie. Oh, I mean, it, I won't argue with you there. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Flashdance is a better movie, I think, between the two. But I think Footloose is the better soundtrack. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know. I gr- I listened to th- I listened right. to Flashdance so much uh, growing up. So it's I it's ingrained in my mind. It's ingrained in my blood. So Jim, did I you go with Flashdance? I'm sorry. I think I, I'm gonna I, go. I'm gonna go with Flashdance. I'll I'll, I'll support. Oh, you. Okay. So which yeah. is which is Thank the you. higher <laughs> seed? The higher <laughs> seed is Footloose. It's a one seed. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I, I believe Flash Dance is a two seed. Is it not? It's a two seed. It's a two seed. So that's that's the patriarchy. It should have like <laughs> it should have some kind of a bonus. Bonus, yeah. <laughs> like a handicap. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of the patriarchy, uh, <laughs> Purple Rain versus Risky Business, uh, mm. songs about putting women in dumpsters, or excuse me, movies in which women are thrown in dumpsters <laughs> and are prostituted. Um, love it. Love uh. the 80s. So wholesome. Um, is anyone here voting for Risky Business over Purple Rain? No. 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 I didn't no. think no. so. So that leaves us with a final four of Woo! Dirty Dancing versus Pretty in Pink, Footloose versus Purple Rain. I actually oh, think I'm fanning myself. It's a great <laughs> Great final four, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just get these four albums and listen to them. You'll be very happy. Yes, yeah, true, true. true. No, not a bad one in the mix. So let's go around the horn first. Dirty Dancing versus Pretty in Pink. Uh, Johnny Minogue, what's your pick? Dirty Dancing. Absolutely. I mean, there's n- there's no comparison. All right. Uh, Jim. I know Kate has a lot to say, and I want to wait to hear. <laughs> I want her to convince me. So you're right now, are you voting for Pretty and Pink? Um, no. Oh, okay. Yes, but yes. Okay. Yeah. You, want, you want to hear my dirty dance? Uh, unless okay. you want to okay. save it for later on. It, I don't, well, yeah. No, no. The final two. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can give you some of my argument right mm. now. Why don't you set up your argument? Okay. Okay. Like dirty dancing. Where to begin? Uh, To what extent does it exemplify the decade? One of the biggest films of the decade. Uh, The album went on to sell 32 million copies and is one of the best-selling albums, soundtrack or no, of all time. It spent 18 weeks at number one on the Billboard 200 uh, with shipments, thank you, Wikipedia, of (laughs) at least 3.25, I don't don't know what that means, a lot of copies. It is the all-time best-selling album in Germany. Um, Not Hasselhoff? No, no, Dirty Dancing. I mean, Dirty Dancing, the soundtrack has a fucking sequel called More Dirty Dancing. <laughs> they could have done better than that. It could have they been could have. Dirty <laughs> Dirty Dirty Dancing. Yeah. Dirty Dancing Dirty. colon Nobody Puts Baby in the Corner. <laughs> Dirty <laughs> Dancing colon So We'll Go to Acapulco. Come on. <laughs> But like, the is there anything? <laughs> exactly. Is there anything more eighties than that? We quickly produced a sequel that is not as good <laughs> as Yum. the original. I mean, it does like it is integral to the movie, right? Like, it's baby going to the Catskills to like stay in a cabin with her family and like has a romance with Johnny Castle, the dance instructor. They yeah. are dancing to songs. They are dancing to these songs, and Dirty Dancing is also. Obviously, it's it's that sort of like core 80s nostalgia, right? Made in the 80s, looking back at the 60s. But there's something about the the anachronistic music of Dirty yes. Dancing that is yes. this weird alchemy, right? Yes. So you have songs like, the, you have like the Renettes, um, R.I.P. Ronnie Spector, uh, Be singing Be, Be My Baby. You have um, uh, Maurice Williams and the Zodiacs doing Stay. You have Mickey and Sylvia. Sylvia! Like Come singing here, lover lo- boy. <laughs> what do you call your lover boy? Yeah, like doing Love is Strange. At the same time, you have the Blow Monkeys covering You Don't Own Me. And you have perhaps like, well, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna back into that. You yeah. have literally Patrick Swayze singing She's Like the Wind. Mm-hmm. You have mm. um it's Hungry oh, Eyes. Hungry oh. Eyes, Eric Carmen, and you have Bill fucking Medley and Jennifer fucking Warren singing I've had the time of my life. Mm-hmm. Now, those three songs, what do they have in common? They aren't from the 1960s. They sure mm-hmm. aren't. Also, mm-hmm. also saxophones. Ah, oh, they all did. <laughs> 
Again, all there. of them, all of them have a sax solo yeah. that's an absolute scorcher. But like that, no, I've like that. Just like those two, every it is the most kind of like yearning for this this past that never existed yes. nostalgically while also being very au courant. That is the magic of Dirty Dancing, and that is why it is the only choice as your number one greatest 80s soundtrack. That was a final two argument, not a final yeah. four <laughs> argument. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. I, uh, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. We're still... So, hey, Jim. Uh, hey, uh, you know, um, yeah, Pretty in Pink had... Uh, uh, they had an album that came out in 2000 that was called uh, Pretty in Pink Revisited. Don't listen to it. It'll hurt my hurt my argument. Yeah, but I just bet. like just like this sounds it's equal so to bad. dirty dancing. So yeah. it's like just forget about anything after that. Yeah, so forget about it. No, I'm, more dirty you, dancing. Yes, yeah. Yes. Well, you know what? Keep keep talking. I'll give you more. I'll give you more when I have to make my final. No, one that's good. Argument. <laughs> So does that mean you're going with Dirty Dancing there, Jim? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, yes. so I think we are unanimous. Like, you're, you're, you're Dirty Dancing, right, you said, Johnny? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. With your namesake. All right, and Footloose <laughs> versus Purple Rain. Uh, I'm going to start with Jim. Which one? So here's the thing. I've never seen Purple Rain, but I know it as an album, and I still think it's better. Okay. <laughs> um, I will say Purple Rain is, as a movie, wild. Like, the first it's time really I watched wild. it, I, I, I should was see like, it. Holy shit, I can't believe that this was A made, B hugely popular. And I'm like, how do women like this movie? Because he's terrible to women. It's it? real terrible. It's, it's terrible. real awful. And Morris Day and the Time are no better. Um, nope. uh, Johnny, where are you on this? <sighs> yeah, I, I I was I'm going back and forth. This this one was more difficult to figure out because I um it's I I kind of I have to break it down to to one thing is that what movie soundtrack would make me want to watch the movie again? Mm -hmm. I think that while I I think it's superior in music because Prince wrote and performed every single song on Purple Rain, the mood I I don't feel as much of an urge to watch the movie as I would with Footloose, even though I think this I think overall the whole canon of Purple Rain soundtrack is a better one than Footloose, but Footloose is really ties more to the actual movie and makes me want to enjoy and reminisce on the movie where Purple Rain, I just want to forget the movie and just listen to the music. That's such a good argument because the thing about the Purple Rain soundtrack is – it, uh, Kate, you've said this in other ones. You don't want any bummers, right? And there's yeah. some bummers on Purple Rain. Like there's like it, it's soul tearing, right? Like yeah, it, it's also well, it's not it's not bummers. It's like filler, but like there's no filler on Purple Rain. No, it's all good. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all good. Um, it, it is there. So in but it's not all a bop. It's no. not like some no. of it is like yeah, mm -hmm. some of it's kind of tortured. Um, yeah, we discussed this in in round one that my argument which was against Purple Rain advancing at the time, was it almost has an unfair advantage because, yes, it is a soundtrack, but it is a artist. And I'm really going to use the word artist there because Prince was an artist yeah. even before mm -hmm. he stopped being called Prince. Um, but uh, at the peak of their career, doing their magnum opus, right? So, mm -hmm. yes, it's a soundtrack, but it is so much more than that. And I'm kind of like, it doesn't, like, it, it, it's on a completely it's, different level than any of these. It's reductive almost to call it a soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like no slight to soundtracks, no. like, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for that, if we're talking about soundtracks being a collection of music that was used in a film and not like an artist's magnum opus, I think Footloose is a better soundtrack. Oh, no. People are going to think I'm absolutely out of my mind or that I have terrible taste. And they'd be right. But I was going to say, and? <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. What else is new? Um, Kate, where are you on this? I have to give it to Purple Rain because, it, I mean, Prince was one of the most extraordinary artists of the 20th century. And, like, Purple Rain is absolutely peak Prince. It's an, So I, I forget... I feel like this was in my in, in the in the pre-show. Who can remember anything, mm -hmm. listeners? My brain is just like a fried egg in a pan, but not on drugs. Um, and it's let's go crazy. The beautiful one, Starling Nikki, responsible for the creation of the parental advisory sticker. When doves cry, purple rain. Like it's just an incredible 
work of art and I have to vote for it, even though it is an album outside time and not really like a great 80s soundtrack, perhaps. It's fair. So I think we are currently deadlocked, correct? And I think they're both That's one seeds. They are. But mm-hmm. Purple Rain is the ultimate number one seed. It got mm-hmm. no D- Dirty Dancing is the ultimate one seed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but Purple three, Rain is third. 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 So it would actually win just by a hair over Footloose here. Mm. Um, so, wow. Okay. Woo! Purple Rain versus Dirty Dancing. Final two <clears throat> around the, the board. Johnny Minogue, Dirty Dancing or Purple Rain? Um, I'm going to have the time of my life. I'm going with Dirty Dancing. It's full. It's the whole package. Absolutely. And Jim? Uh, I need to be convinced. I'm going to. I, I want to hear the other side of Ooh, Kate's thing. Let's hear no, the other side. Mm-hmm. I mean, like the only other thing that i was going to give you is that in december 2003 they released an album called ultimate dirty dancing which contains every song from the motion picture dirty dancing in the order it appears in the film that doesn't sway me but um... Uh, but should i should i read all of the songs to you even once they get the filler it's all bangers be my baby big girls don't cry there's a couple merengues there's a there's a trot the fox johnny's mambo those are the dances uh time of my life instrumental version where are you tonight do you love me do you love love man otis writing so good gazebo waltz instrumental stay just a little bit wipe out the safaris hungry eyes eric carmen Mm. overload zappa costa hey baby bruce channel de toto and poco which is what they dance to (laughs) some kind of wonderful these arms of mine cry to me will you love me tomorrow wow love is strange you don't own me yes in the still of the night she's like the wind the kellerman's anthem and i've had the time of my goddamn life <laughs> if, you, if the kellerman's anthem doesn't push you over i don't That's know true. Wow. exactly wow. right wow. um uh, did anybody watch the movies that made us on dirty dancing no, no, no. Yet. no. Very interesting. And one of the things you find out in that film is that they were in the middle of shooting it. They did not have a song for the big final dance number. Oh, and my they God. Were like about to film it. They had already started doing choreography before they had the song. And um, that's true. And then they were like going through tapes that were being sent to them. And I had the time of my life happened to be in one of the demo tapes that was sent. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Use that one without like any like thought about how big it would be. It uh. is mind bending to me. Like even watching the movie the first time, I was like, "Wait a minute! They're in the 1950s and they're dancing mm-hmm. to a song that is mm-hmm. very clearly not from the 1950s." Not mm-hmm. from the 1950s. They did that yeah. a couple times in that yes. movie where it's like, yeah. you know, and, like <laughs> and the final dance never like breaks the fourth wall in a thousand ways. It's just there's no like the alchemy of Dirty Dancing in some ways is like the most 80s like wish fulfillment pleasure center nostalgia like yeah it's the most 80s it's the most 80s thing in the world well and also this also encompasses original music from the 80s as well as the nostalgia that we have talked yes. about in so many other mm-hmm. soundtracks right. it is a melange of both of those things and they do it so well <laughs> agreed then and i've actually been using the fact i don't i i did not push forward a lot of soundtracks that were primarily throwbacks of the 50s and 60s because to me they're not 80s but this time i actually think it is it is definitively 80s because it, if you were a boomer in that time, that's who this movie was made for. You My were... mother had this on cassette. Of course. There. Of course. <laughs> yeah, <that's>... um, <laughs> does anyone want to speak for Purple Rain as an argue for why it should win here? I think what it comes down to is that sort of like calling it a soundtrack feels reductive for Purple Rain, but also like very clearly talks about what's so special about Dirty Dancing, right? Like, I think that for me is the distinction. Yeah, I agree. I, it's like if you want to talk about one of the best albums of the 80s, maybe yes. we can include yes. Purple Rain and be in here. I just, but when it comes to a soundtrack where it is a representative of the movie, and that's what a soundtrack is, a representative of that movie, this is much more over Purple Rain. Because Purple Rain, you can live without ever having seen the movie. Which yeah. I think, Jim, you just said you never saw the movie. I know, so. right? Yeah, I th- I think you all definitely uh, convinced me because I think my my sticking point was the the retro music, right? Um, but I think you've made a pretty good argument there. And of all soundtracks, I think uh, isn't Dirty Dancing one of the most iconic? And yeah. we we barely touched upon Swayze. She likes 
she's like Ugh. the wind which is she's like the wind so in my good. dreams i mean like what a loss what a loss oh what a loss so much and, and what a loss you were gonna say something johnny i yeah I, okay and so i i remember this okay this was 1987 this the fall of 1987 i'm in the back seat of of, of, a, of a bus going to school all the cool fourth grade girls are sitting on the back seat and they're yeah. singing i had the time of my life and i can vividly remember I remember the three girls' names. I can see their faces. I can see their curly hair. And it's like almost 35 years later that it still sticks in my memory. That like everyone has a little memory of like a song from that el- from the album. That it lives apart from anything from the movie or from or its original source. So this is it. <laughs> this is it it. and like 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 it has a Mm -hmm. lift right like and so the physical lift in the dance is like it's just it's perfect it is a perfect pop cultural object it's euphoric and it is the 80s it's cheesy it makes no sense Mm -hmm. it's tacky it's um overly sentimental um and it is jennifer gray Oh God! What a, yeah, we love her. It's um, undeniable. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. So I think we're unanimous. I, I I think our pick for the best '80s soundtrack is "Dirty Dancing." Yes. Do you agree? Do you want to file a robbery report with the Beverly Hills Cop? Tell us how you really feel by leaving a comment on this episode at greatpopculturedebate.com or find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube. While you're there, make sure you subscribe and follow the podcast so you can hear about what new debates are coming soon, vote in open polls, and even decide which topics we tackle next. I want to say thank you to my panel. I will never forget about you. Hey, 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 hey. And thank (laughs) you for listening. If you loved what you heard, please consider supporting us on Patreon, where you can get even more exclusive content and you get episodes a whole day early. We hope you have a good one. And remember, everyone is entitled to their wrong opinions. <laughs>